take a deep breath. And relax. Take another deep breath. And relax. Take another deep breath and relax. Just holding the exhaled state for a bit if you can in the total silence after exhalation. And obviously resume breathing. While there is many ways to use our attention, we could say there's only two primary ways. keeps it simple and it's quite accurate. One is our attention can be absorbed in whatever occurs, whatever appears to us. This could be any perception, any sensation, any thought. And usually in this state, we'll have descriptions about what we perceive. mental descriptions, mentations, conceptualizations, memories, associations, strategies. Now, within this one out of two primary modes of using, or you could say not using, our attention deliberately, within this one, there is a countless ways, infinite ways in which our attention gets absorbed based on the shapes, the stories, the thoughts. But the other way of using our attention is simple, and it's always the same. It's singular. And that is to be aware of the fact that we are aware. And there's a distinct difference in experiential flavor, if you will, of our state of mind when we're in a moment of recognizing awareness as opposed to forgetting awareness or forgetting the essence of being and being usually mindlessly absorbed, automatically taken away, carried away by the mentations, the descriptions that we have of whatever we perceive or think about. So the common state of mind is the state of object perception, object absorption. Attention is absorbed by or it's indulging in whatever perception arises, whatever is known in that moment, whatever appears on the screen of awareness. That's for most people their regular state of mind. There's nothing wrong with this, however, it does when it's not coupled with high degree of self-realization or self-conviction generally lead to delusions and stories and beliefs that take us away from our natural fountain of well-being. They tend to take us away from source vision or source alignment or God alignment, if you will. They take us away from the self and they make us world absorbed, world lost, if you will. 
This you could call the state of samsara, as opposed to the state of nirvana. To be fooled by maya, or the play of form and separation, so forth. The same attention, this very, very same awareness can be deployed in a different way. It can be deployed by pausing just for a moment. Often I say two to five seconds. Pausing the world absorption, the object focus absorption. Just interrupting it, breaking it, cutting that chain just for a few seconds. And what do you notice is that attention returns quite automatically to its essence, which we generally initially feel like a sense of coming back to the present moment. Generally also we become then more aware of our physical bodies, it tends to be a side effect or intermediary stage, where before we were sort of lost in the mentations or the imaginations of the mind, the references to the world and events and things and people. And when we interrupt that for a few seconds, attention has nowhere to go but back to its source. So the initial phase of returning from a mental projection to the true state of self-awareness, usually there's an intermediate phase of returning to the sense of your present body being here and now. Now, in some, say, mindfulness teachings or more popularized versions of this, that tends to be the end state of this endeavor, just to come back to the presence of the body and so forth, which is great. However, it's more of a segue to true self-awareness. It is not by itself yet full self-awareness. But nevertheless, it's, it's a better state to be in more frequently than to be lost in mental projections. So initially we notice, okay, we come back, our attention comes back to the sense of our bodies being here and now. We feel more present, we feel more quote unquote mindful. We're more aware of our environment and our sense of the body sitting in a chair. And we're less, less lost in time perceptions. We're present. Then if we soften even that state, if we let go, if we pause or stop, even that state of attention absorption in the body, in the present moment of the body, sitting in the room that it's sitting in, or walking on the street, or sitting in a park, whatever it might be, if we notice that perception to still be an object of attention, your body is an object of attention, it's not the self, it's not what you are. It's really no different than perceiving a thought and being absorbed in that thought. It's really no different than perceiving a tree and being absorbed in your stories about that tree or your appreciation perhaps for that tree. It's really no different than to ponder a relationship issue or concern that you might have and being lost in that perception. It just feels more present to be aware of the body. It brings you more out of linear time and more into the present moment within linear time. But it is still part of the stream of time. It is still an object. It still has shape. It still has form. It's not the self. It's a perception that's arising to the self. So the next phase or step then is to release, to relinquish, to let go of even that perception. To just let it be as a perception and not as any sort of assumption that that's what you are. So you're witnessing now the sense of present body consciousness, meaning your attention is aware of the sense of the body, the sense of the body being here. But now what you're noticing, you're taking a, a higher step, a more transcendental step in simply witnessing that your sense of having a body in this moment is still an object. 
It's still in perception that's occurring to something deeper, to a higher witness, to a deeper, higher consciousness. And in so doing, you can just let that perception be. You don't have to change how you feel. You don't have to try to eliminate the perception of the body, although you can simply by no longer imagining the body, no longer referring to the body. So you can effectively with practice eliminate the entire world, including body perception, like this flip of a switch. This takes practice, but eventually, just at the drop of a hat, just by will, you can drop the entire perception of the world, the universe, body, form, and so forth, and sort of sink into or rest into that void-like, space-like self or awareness that naturally, inherently remains as yourself. So take another deep breath. And as you exhale, relax all of your focus. Relax all focus points. Don't focus on anything. But stay alert, stay aware of the fact that you exist. But stay aware of the fact that you exist without any additives, no additions, no dilutions, no attachments. Just that pure, naked, empty, experiential fact that you are. Only the awareness that I am. Only the awareness of the fact that you are aware. And even if for two to five seconds you glimpse this natural condition of your true self, in that brief window, you can begin to notice how the world disappears. The sense of an external reality disappears. You'd have to conjure that back up using your imagination to make the world feel real once again. But in a moment of naked, pure awareness, when that self, that self-existent isness or I am, is all that there is for that moment, you can realize through that window of opportunity, of self-recognition, that the world is nothing but a projection of the imagination. With practice, with repeated practice, this will seep into your belief system, or rather it will uproot your belief system in the world. So initially it's just a glimpse, it's just a sense, but then you're like, yeah, but the world disappears because I'm just not thinking about it, but it's still there. That's why I can return to it. And in a sense, this seems to be the case. But with repeated practice, the world turns inside out. Awareness is no longer the witness of the world, inside the world. The world is now a consequence of awareness. It exists inside of awareness. So with repeated practice of self-recognition, quite naturally over time, this conviction we have in an external world that exists on its own merits, independent from awareness or source, will begin to dissolve, will begin to be seen as an illusion, as an idea only. And then you begin to see that these ideas, these perceptions, these imaginations that make it seem real, that their very nature is actually this awareness. Their very nature is actually this beingness. And then there is sort of a true non-duality that is realized, a non-distinction, a non-separation, a unity of all things being the one being. So rest as yourself. Forget about the object. Don't give them so much credit. Don't refer to them as actual outside objects. Notice them as dream perception. 
that cannot exist apart from knowing them. They are dreamed by you into consciousness. See the world as a dream, and you will begin to awaken and become more lucid in the dream. This is a dream. What's real or changeless is yourself. That which you've always intuited as that innermost sense of me. You're always referring to me, to I, to mine. And you don't know what this means. You're just assuming a whole bunch of things. But if you look through the assumptions, there's one thing that has always been with you, and that's the sense of I am, or the sense of me, or the sense of I exist. That's what's always been changeless. You've not noticed this, but it's always been with you, moment to moment, dream to dream, illusion to illusion, delusion to delusion, distortion to distortion, hallucination to hallucination, belief system to belief system. At the core of it, you've already always referred to I. What is this I? really in experience, directly, in direct perception, what is me? Go to that sense, that innermost sense of I am. And don't add anything to it. Don't add the shape of your body, the memory of your face, your hair, your experiences how you've been mistreated by the world, how you have exactly what you want, how you don't have anything you want, whatever it is, whatever you add to this I amness will create the dream for you. Forget about the additives, the additions, and try to see just awareness purely as it is, that sense of I exist, I am aware. It's always with you. It's always already self-illumined, self-illuminated, self-present, self-liberated. It is before time appears to you. Therefore, it is timeless. It's even beyond the perception of the present moment. Because me is the one who's witnessing even the sensation of the present moment. So me must be more timeless than even the present moment. More original, less form-based, less illusory than even the perception of this present moment. Because this perception of this present moment is still known by you. That innermost, formless, timeless, void-like, space-like, supreme, changeless, ever-present, innately intelligent, sentient, truly alive, changelessly real, me, me, me. Forget about the world and abide in your awareness of this innermost me without additions, without attachment, without associations, just pure you, the space of you that is ever present, it's even beyond being present. It just is. Even before you're aware of the present moment, you already are there to even witness the present moment. That is the true I am. The formless I am. It's not the body being present here and now. That's another perception on top of the screen of I am, on top of the space. It's an hallucination inside of the pure space, the timeless space of awareness. Rest in me, your me, which is also me, and it's also you. And when you seize all thoughts for just a moment, just two to five seconds of no thinking, this natural awareness becomes very apparent, very lucid, very obviously aware of itself. And then you simply repeat those two to five seconds at least 12 times a day with earnest, genuine interest. And then the self will take care of the rest.
God will take care of your freedom, your liberation, your remembrance of your true state. Just show up for your own liberation, that's all. Interrupt your dream for long enough to become available to the creator within, the self within. You gotta meet God halfway. You gotta meet the truth halfway. That means let go of your insistences and attachments to the associations you've built up around this essential, timeless, changeless I am. Stop dreaming for two to five seconds and be wakeful to awareness, to me, your innermost me. And there you will find the extended hand of the creator, the ever extended hand of the true self to all of its forgotten agents, you.